MP, Ministry of Industries, Government of Bangladesh, with us as chief guest, Mr. Mohammad Ehsan Ilahi, respected secretary, Ministry of Labor and Employment, Government of Bangladesh, as special guest. As guests of honor, we have we have Mr. Ardashir Kabir, President, Bangladesh Employees Federation, and Ms. Shamim Ara, Chairman, National Coordination Committee for Workers' Education. Today's keynote presentation will be presented virtually by Mr. Bartrand Dagelayer, Principal Administrator, Biosafety, Novel Food, Feed Safety, Chemical Accidents, OECD. The whole inaugural session will be chaired by Mr. Tumo Putiainen, Country Director, ILO Bangladesh, and welcome remarks will be delivered by Dr. Khandakar Gola Mohazem, Research Director, CPD. Now I would like to see, the guest has already uh, come up on this stage. Now I, I would like to welcome, uh, sir, please come up on this stage. Let's start the very first session. Thank you very much for coming. So thank you, and um, uh, for, uh, from my side also, welcome to this uh, very interesting and uh, timely um, Industrial Safety Forum. Uh, it's my pleasure to chair this session. This is an uh, inaugural session, so it's a relatively easy task in many ways. Uh, first of all, I, of course, want to welcome everybody in the, in the dais, and I will also provide some introductory marks as chair a little bit later. So I want to commence our proceedings. Uh, I want to request Dr. Fahmida Khatun, Executive Director from CPD, to provide uh, his uh, welcome remarks. And already at this point of time, uh, thank uh, CPD for uh, helping us and associating with the ILO to organize these proceedings. Over to you, sir. Oh, Mr. Morrison, uh, correct. Sorry, Mr. Morrison. Honorable Chief Guest, Mr. Nurul Mojit Humayun Mamun, MP, Minister, Ministry of Industries, respected special guest, Mr. Mohammad Ehsan Ilahi, Secretary, Ministry of Labor and Employment, distinguished guest of honor, Mr. Ardashir Kabir, President, Bangladesh Employers Federation, Ms. Shami Mara, Chairman, Bangladesh uh, uh, National Coordination Committee for Workers Education, NCCWE. Keynote presenter, Mr. Bartrand Daglier, Principal Administra Administrator, Biosafety, Novel Food, Feed Safety, Chemical Accidents, OECD, ENVAHS. Distinguished uh, guests, member of the parliaments, senior government officials, senior business leaders, trade union leaders, uh, representative of development partners, international organizations, academia, representative of uh, civil society organizations, journalists, and, uh, and the participants. On behalf of Center for Policy Dialogue and International Labor Organization, ILO, we welcome you all to the Industrial Safety Forum. Following the international practices and tradition, International uh, Industrial Safety Forum is being organized in Bangladesh for the first time. In fact, this uh, kinds of forum has been organized in other countries. For example, in China, they have regularly organized this event. During 2012 uh, to 2018, they have organized such a forum for more than uh, for nine times. So this forum is being organized to create a platform for sharing information, data, views on industrial safety uh, between parties. We mean party means government, private sector, workers, CSOs, NGOs, development partners, international organizations, brands, and buyers. With increasing industrialization in the country, the risk of industrial safety concerns have been increasing. We uh, uh, very well recognize that. And this demands a more coordinated effort and initiatives between different public organizations 
and private organizations and workers to address the industrial safety related concerns. Bangla but Bangladesh has, uh, has shown its strong commitment to improve the industrial safety. First, uh, in addressing the safety challenges in the ready-made garment sector after the Rana Plaza event. And second, uh, it has started to review the safety concerns in non-RMG sector after an incident happened uh, in a food processing factory in last year. But despite that, industrial accidents have been, uh, have been increasing in the country, not only in, um, uh, in one or two sectors, but across the board in different sectors. And, uh, and this has actually created the demand for more and more discussion and debates uh, uh, regarding the industrial safety related issues. It is appeared that the safety measures dealt by different public agencies yet to, uh, uh, yet to ensure a coordinated effort. Every, uh, different organizations have their different terms of reference and they are actually undertaking that, but they are need to have a much more coordination between different agencies in order to ensure the safety for all. And wo workers are also not fully aware and not involved in implementation of the industrial safety related process. Similarly, from the private sector or the employer side, the safety culture, that's the concept of safety culture, is yet to be established and rather, I would say, missing. We are ensuring safety-related measures, but we need a safety culture, a practice, which is a part of a corporate culture, is yet to be ensured at the factory level. And there is a wide diversity between industries in terms of the preparedness uh, on industrial safety. Between the sectors, we understand there are domestic market-oriented sectors, export-oriented sectors, so there is a, a, a divergence and the differences in terms of the safety concept and safety-related measures. In terms of the locations, some of the areas we found safety measures are better addressed while some other not, which is uh, found uh, in different researches. In terms of the size, uh, large factories have, a, have a, uh, some sorts of a safety uh, preparedness and practices, while the smaller ones are relatively behind. And there are formal and informal other uh, sectors and activities where these safety concerns are yet to be uh, ensured properly. So it is high time uh, to discuss safety-related issues more and more. I think this, uh, one, this is not a one-shot event. This is a platform which needs to be continued in the future to have more and more discussion, to reduce the gaps and dif uh, differences of the perception regarding the safety issues uh, in the workplace. We hope that this platform will provide that opportunity to all the key stakeholders. This dialogue event uh, will give the stakeholders to exchange their views about the role of the government, role of the private sector, and role of other stakeholders. And based on that, a declaration will be announced at the end of the program, uh, where we like to focus on the future course of action based on your inputs and suggestions uh, in uh, today's day-long event. In fact, CPD as a civil society organization has long been involved in creating that knowledge-based uh, platforms and debates and discussions. Uh, earlier, uh, CPD did uh, a civil, uh, CPD organized a civil society monitoring initiative uh, after the Rana Plaza incidents, which has been continued from 2013 to 2018. And that has played a very key role in terms of knowledge discussions and debate within the country uh, among the stakeholders. Similarly, after the last year's incidents in a non-RMG sector uh, factory, uh, we have uh, initiated and launched a, a, another uh, event, um, uh, another safety-related uh, uh, civil society initiative. And this program is organized uh, with, the, uh, with cooperation of the ILO under that partnership. We hope you will make, this uh, you will make your time today to attend the, the, the all three sessions uh, and you will share your views and exchange knowledges with us and your in insightful thoughts would enrich the future course of action by the uh, stakeholders for better industrial safety uh, in the country. So finally, we welcome you all once again uh, to this platform. Thank you. Thank you so much, and um, let me now take the opportunity to move there and give also some introductory remarks as, uh, as a co-organizer.
So thank you, and of course, first I want to recognize the excellent uh, dais that we have in the form of uh, the chief guest, Mr. Nurul Mahid Mahmoud Humayan, MP, and the Honorable Minister of Industries. Also our special guest, MD Ehsan E. Elahi, Secretary of Labor and Employment, and guest of honor, Mr. Adasis Kabir, President of BF, and Ms. Shamin Ara, Chairperson of the NCCWE. Um, I'm very pleased to be with you here today, and I see many familiar faces who have over the years, and many organizations who have over the years been working on industrial safety. This is maybe perhaps not the first time we discuss industrial safety or occupational safety and health, but it is extremely timely that we convene at this point of time because it is an, there is an unprecedented opportunity for Bangladesh to continue to showcase its experience, its continuing work, and its future ambitions in relation to establishing a true industrial safety framework for the betterment of the industries and for the safety of the workers, but also for the sustainability of the industries. This the past decades, almost past decades work uh, must come to fruition through our collective efforts. The accomplishments that have been driven by the reforms in the RMG industry and the good examples that have been hard won and which have been invested by so many of you must come to fruition with some novel thinking in terms of industrial safety. And we believe that these kind of good practices and lessons learned, it is extremely timely now to increasingly share them and increasingly look at how they can be applied in other industries and also down the supply chain for smaller SMEs and smaller operators. This requires collaboration and coordination between relevant government agencies with workers' organizations, with employers' organizations, with private sector, with civil society and professional organizations, all of which have been participating in these reforms over the years. We as ILO, we are keen to support these collaborations and efforts and these partnerships based on the dual attempt to continue to build better governance better quality of government institutions who are responsible at the end of the day for the oversight of safety at work. But also through the efforts of the businesses and workers' organizations to come together under a common vision of creating a safe industry and an industrial safety framework that matters and shows that Bangladesh is moving forward with true safety at work approach. And we are happy, of course, that we are able to convene today. And I want to thank the sponsors for this meeting, which is uh, our RMG2 program, which is uh, sponsored by Canada and Netherlands. This program in particular has been the one that, through ILO's efforts, have been uh, supporting the industrial safety work for almost eight years now. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to draw your attention to the fact that there are quite a lot of new winds blowing in this area of work. First of all, DIFI, as the responsible institution for safety and compliance from the government, has recently established an industrial safety unit. We look forward to seeing how this industrial safety unit can truly work forward industrial safety for all sectors. Also, there is, of course, the RMG Sustainability Council that has been established and is growing in terms of its work. There's also a novel effort by the likes of FBCCI establishing a safety cell, very welcome initiative. There's also the long-standing work of the Employers' Federation and the trade unions in supporting from their end betterment of occupational safety and health and creation of a true safety culture in Bangladesh. So all these commendable efforts coming together can and should 
be aligned under a common industrial safety framework for Bangladesh. A industrial safety framework for Bangladesh that is understandable when outsiders look at Bangladesh, but it's also operational in terms of pulling together the key experiences, capacities, and mandates of the various organizations. Something that effectively produces that industrial safety that Bangladesh needs and the workers uh, merit and desire. There also is, and this is my last point, there also is a very favorable and necessary environment globally for establishing betterment of occupational safety and industrial safety for Bangladesh. There are increasing requests in around due diligence and trading partners, market needs, to see that Bangladesh has the right kind of regulatory environment and the right kind of ambition and capacity by the private sector to really have a safety and compliance in the factories where your trading partners want to source goods from. So these two together, the favorable environment, the necessity to work towards a better industrial safety, plus the experiences, the commitments, and the capacity that Bangladesh already has, because almost 10 years of industrial safety related work, that together provides the right kind of positive wind behind these efforts. So I personally, and as representing ILO, believe that there is an unprecedented opportunity to make something bold happen in this space. And I believe that you, who are partners in this room, and many of you who have been working on this for a long time, are the right people to debate, to ideate, and to put forward the right kind of recommendations and ideas going forward. That's my wish for today's proceedings. And I would also like to, uh, and I hope to see you all during the whole of the day, so that we, are, we get the best kind of seeds of thought for this process to truly unravel. Thank you so much, and look forward to the proceedings. And now I think we have the keynote, which is produced uh, virtually. Uh, could I ask the organizers, please, to, to go forward with that? This is Mr. Bernard Dagalier, Principal Administrator of Biosafety, Novel Food, Feed Safety, and Chemical Accidents from OACD. What we wanted to have through this exercise is that we wanted to have an outside view, an outside input, to remind us around how this industrial safety matters and how globally industrial safety is also looked at from a, a competent organization such as OACD who has been working on these matters a lot uh, over the years. Over to you, sir. Hello? Yes, we can hear you, sir. You are live. Uh, go ahead, uh, please proceed. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Good morning, distinguished guests and uh, participants from Bangladesh. My name is Bertrand Dagalier from the OECD, and I'm very honored uh, of having been invited to deliver keynotes to this very important first uh, industrial safety forum in Bangladesh. I will, um, during my presentation, I will uh, switch off my camera due to some instability of my connection. But first, let me share my screen for starting. Can you confirm you can see my screen? Yes, please go ahead. Thank you. So, 
I have entitled my presentation Industrial Accidents Prevention, Preparedness and Response. And I would like to deliver today some elements for building the national safety frameworks that we at OECD, through our program on chemical accidents, we thought were important to highlight. Few words uh, for, for those not knowing what is what the OECD is. So the OECD is the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. It is an intergovernmental organization. Its motto is Better Policies for Better Lives, comprising 38 member countries from Americas, Europe, Asia, Asia and Pacific, plus several candidates and key partner countries. And the main activity of the OECD is to provide, to provide advice to governments, platform for information exchange, analysis and compare data, harmonize practices and standards, as well as recommending policy. And in this context, at the Environment, Health and Safety Division of the OECD, a chemical accidents program is run and is developed not only with the member countries, but also in collaboration with other international organizations, industry, trade union, environmental NGOs, and other interested countries. We all know that major accidents are still happening worldwide. And over the past decades, we have in mind some major accidents having caused death injuries, as well as significant environmental pollution and very often massive economic losses. Some of them are, are mentioned in these slides, having hap happened in all regions. And to mention just uh, two uh, important accidents or something. I think we lost uh, lost the voice. I'm just checking if uh, we're coming back. Yes, sir, we have you back. You were on the. Uh, now we don't have your. You are, you, are, you are muted. If you can unmute and proceed. Yes, please go ahead. We have the connection. Um, just please proceed. Okay, can you still? Yeah, we can hear you. Just proceed with the with the narrative, and we will catch up with the slides. Okay, thank you. So, uh, do you want me to, to share again my screen? Uh, yes, please. You can you can do so. Um,
Can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. If it's better without the slides, we will share the slides later on with the audience. But if you can please narrate the key uh, points, I think that would be welcome. Uh, we, we already have the slides in the folder. So can you please. hear me now? Yes, we can hear you, sir. So if you, if you just go through the narrative of the presentation, that would be useful for us uh, to avoid uh, the connection problems. Uh, we cannot hear you. Please unmute yourself. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Please. Yeah, if you, if you just proceed with the narrative, we have the slides, so we, we hear you now, so please proceed with, uh, with the narrative. We cannot hear you, please. We cannot hear you. Please go ahead without the slide. We have the slide. Please go ahead. Please unmute yourself. I'm very sorry. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Do you see this, the the slides? Uh, please do not share the slide. Just. Just speak. Okay, I will not share. I understand. Yes, I will not share. Okay, I suppose you see that. I think we, for the benefit of the proceedings, I think we will cut off this session. We try to see if we can get him back later on, not as part of this session, but later on. I think we, we better uh, proceed because we are in any case a little bit, um, a little bit late in our proceedings. Let's just put this a bit here. There we go. So thank you, and I think we move then to, to remarks. Uh, we, move to, we start with uh, guest of honor, Mr. Adrashir Kabir. President of uh, uh, Employers Federation of Bangladesh. Please, go ahead. Uh, our chief guest this morning, the Honorable Minister for Industries, Mr. Nurul Majid Mamun Humayun. Mr. Hassan Elahi, Secretary, Minister of Labor, respected guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to you. 
It's a pleasure to be a part of this inaugural session of the Industrial Safety Forum, ISF in short, and I thank the organizers, CPD and the ILO, for coming up with this first ISF in Bangladesh. The actions we discuss today will be vital in the context of Bangladesh's social and economic progress. I'm looking forward to seeing the plans and actions discussed today come to fruition in the future. The topic for discussion this morning is uh, industrial safety, and the first question that we have to ask ourselves is, of course, what does industrial safety mean? I mean, it may be obvious for those who are experts in this field, but uh, it encompasses a lot of, lot of aspects, and I think it's important to point that out. I mean, in simple words, the management of all operations and procedures in an industry in order to protect its employees and assets by minimizing hazards, risks, accidents, and near misses is called industrial safety. As you're no doubt aware, industrial safety is a broad area of workplace safety covering a number of issues and topics, including, and here this is very important, uh, occupational health and safety. You know what we in the, in the business we know as OSH. Now, occupational health and safety is essentially, I mean, if you look at it in a Venn diagram, you will see that industrial safety is a subset of occupational health and safety. So I'll just spend uh, a few seconds just uh, going into the idea of occupational safety and health, which is a multidisciplinary field concerned with the safety, health, and welfare of people at work, i.e. in an occupation. The goal of an occupational safety and health program is to foster a safe and healthy occupational environment. OSH also protects all the general public who may be affected by the occupational environment. Since 1950... The International Labour Organization, the ILO, and the WHO have shared a common definition of occupational health. It was adopted by the joint ILO-WHO Committee on Occupational Health at its first session in 1950 and revised at its 12th session in 1995. The definition reads as follows, and I quote, The main focus on occupational health is on three different objectives. First, the maintenance and promotion of workers' health and working capacity. Two, the improvement of working environment and work to become conducive to safety and health. And third, development of work organizations and working cultures in a direction which supports health and safety at work and in doing so also promotes a positive social climate and smooth operation and may enhance productivity of the undertakings. The concept of working culture is intended in this context to mean a reflection of the essential value systems adopted by the undertaking concerned. Such a culture is reflected in practice in the managerial systems, personnel policy, principles for participation, training policies, and quality management of the undertaking. The quality of occupational safety is characterized by Firstly, the indicators reflecting the level of industrial injuries. Secondly, the average number of days of incapacity for work per employer. And third, the employee's satisfaction with their work conditions. And fourthly, employee's motivation to work safely. There are other issues with industrial safety. There's general safety, which, are, which basically encompasses issues and concerns that are common across all industries. Site-specific safety issues process and production safety, material safety, electrical safety, building and structural safety, including temporary installations, environmental safety, fire safety, accident prevention, and, of course, work-related injury. I mean, the work-related injury, is, the definition of work-related injury or illness, which is the basis of compensation claims, is not yet universally accepted. We should bear that in mind. However, there are some established principles that are generally followed all over the world. The second important question is, I mean, why is industrial safety necessary? With technological advancement in manufacturing, the increase in the number of industrial accidents every year has led to a realization of the importance of industrial safety. It is estimated that globally, Almost, I mean, almost or more than 2 million people die annually as a result of workplace-related accidents or diseases. There are an additional, 
uh, I won't be specific, about 375 million non-fatal work-related injuries annually. It is estimated that the economic burden of occupational-related injury and death is nearly 4% of the global gross domestic product each year. The human cost of this adversity is enormous. In order to avoid accidents, employers must be aware of industrial safety principles and danger areas of that industry. The import and from the employer's point of view as well, the importance of industrial safety cannot be underestimated. Given the highly specialized nature of the work, many of the jobs are carried out by trained and skilled employees. Now that, uh, you know, from a, from a profit point of view, you have to bear in mind that there's a lot of cost involved in training and making sure that your employee becomes highly skilled. Now, workers who sustain lost time injuries can be difficult to replace, even temporarily. Because of this, injuries can have significant effects on the company's production output, shipping schedules, fulfillment of vendor relationships, and customer satisfaction. It's obvious, I mean, it's pretty obvious, therefore, that good safety practices then not only keep workers safe, but also help maintain employee, vendor, and client satisfaction. In a nutshell, the objectives of industrial safety systems are as follows. Preventing work-related fatalities, disabling injuries, illness, and damage to machinery and materials, ensuring continued production by preventing disruptive incidents, reducing workers' compensation costs, maintaining low insurance rates, and minimizing indirect costs associated with accidents, strengthening safety culture and increasing employee morale, and meeting vendor and client expectations. To achieve this end, we also need to stress the importance of industrial safety planning. I mean, th th this is the stage before you even get to, get to achieving these things. In fact, industrial safety should be part of the job planning and site design. So important early and ongoing considerations include plant layout, fire prevention systems, health and hygiene, safety training, alarms and warning systems, adequate lighting in work areas and corridors, flooring and working areas that are easy to clean and organize, insulation, signboards, and written safety instructions. Moreover, industrial safety guidelines and training are necessary for being, uh, for being aware of what can go wrong and how to avoid it for creating awareness of the good practices available for the delivery of effective safety instrumental systems, for providing basic training and well-established techniques for engineering of safety systems, for assisting engineers and technicians to support and participate in the safety systems activities at their work with good background knowledge of the subject. Now, at this juncture, I mean, you know, I must come back to my brief, which is, I think my brief today is to basically you know, uh, present uh, to you what the Employers' Federation is about and um, the trust upon, and basically thrust upon BF's current role with regard to industrial safety. And with that, I'll do it in a slightly historical context so it becomes much more obvious. I mean, uh, I'd just like to begin by giving a brief introduction of uh, Bangladesh Employers Federation. BF is the only national level federation of owners in the country. Associations of all major industrial sectors of the country and a substantial number of large and medium sized privately owned organizations are members of BF. BF plays a leading role in protecting the interests of owners at national and international level. BF works closely with the ILO, the European Union, the IOE, which is the international organization of employers based in Geneva, and a number of other international organizations, both public and private. The, the list is too long to go into here. And of course, the Ministry of Labor and Employment and works on issues of various interest to the owners at all times. Apart from that, annually and every year, BF represents the employers at the International Labor Conference in Geneva, the Sustainability Compact meetings in Brussels, and SDG meetings wherever they're held. On issues related to workplace environment and safety, minimum wages and other social policies, the Federation represents employers in other national and international forums, including the ILO. BF also works to nominate members on behalf of employers in the labor courts of Bangladesh. Allow me to put uh, our work uh, in its historical context. 
So that's clear. At one time, Bangladesh was primarily known as an agricultural country, and jute and tea were its main exports. In 1970, as per World Bank statistics, agriculture constituted 59.4% of our GNP, and industry was 6.6% only, while services constituted 34%. In the 80s, the garment industry started taking off, and industrialization took a step forward. If the country is to develop, there is no alternative to industrialization. And to make industrialization sustainable, it is important to ensure occupational health and safety in the workplace. The country, as you all know, was making some progress towards industrialization through the progress, of, mainly through the progress of the garment sector, which kick-started our industrialization in a big way because the jute sector had basically died away by then, which is unfortunate, but uh, that's the way it is. But with the collapse of Rana Plaza in 2013, I raised Rana Plaza, the dreaded name, but with its collapse in 2013, the image of Bangladesh at home and abroad was severely damaged. Workplace safety in Bangladesh became questionable. In the context of that event, accord and alliance were formed through the Sustainable Compact, and a significant number of factories came under their safety compliance systems and purview over a long period of time. Better Work Bangladesh also continued its work under the supervision of the ILO. Policy matters were determined by the Bangladesh Employers Federation, which represented the owner's side in all cases throughout this period. Considering the overall issues, in 2013, the government amended the Bangladesh Labor Act 2006 in 87 places in just three months and updated the relevant sections on occupational safety and health in the workplace. Bangladesh labor rules were formulated in 2015 as necessary rules to implement the Labor Act. Later in 2018, the Bangladesh Labor Act 2006 was amended again. Subsequently, the work of amending the labor rules as per the amendment of law in 2018 is currently underway. In all this, Bangladesh Employers Federation has made a significant contribution on behalf of the owners in amending the law as well as formulating policies and rules. Bearing in mind the importance of mills and factories inspections, the Directorate of Factory and Establishment Inspection was reborn as a separate department within nine months, and much more manpower was recruited. The Labor Inspection Management application, the Lima app, has been launched to ensure mobility, transparency, and accountability, and create a digital linkage. To accelerate the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, and proper implementation of policies on occupational health and safety, workplace development and identification, prevention and remedies for workplace-related illness or disease, the establishment of the Occupational Health and Safety Academy is uh, progressing rapidly. Major training and activities related to occupation health and safety has also been undertaken. Under the supervision of the Bangladesh Employers Federation, in the first phase, 114 senior master trainers of BGMEA and BKMEA were trained through the training center of the ILO in Turin in Italy. In the second phase, these senior master trainers trained 8,038 medium-level factory supervisors in 583 mills and factories on occupational health and safety. In the third phase, more than 8 lakh workers in the workplace were given basic training on health and safety. In addition to encouraging the organization to form safety committees under the project, BF also regularly conducts training programs on occupational health and safety in collaboration with the ILO's ACTEMP, the Employers Activities Bureau, and Japan's AOTS. In the light of the Bangladesh Labor Act, the government has formed the Workers' Welfare Foundation Fund to ensure the social security of workers in the formal and informal sectors. The relatives of workers killed in an accident, workers needing treatment from incurable diseases, and providing education assistance in the higher education of the workers' child are paid for from this fund. Having said all that, that's the good news. But some challenges, however, need to be addressed as soon as possible. I mean, I'll just mention a few here, the obvious ones. First, as I think uh, Mr. Mazam mentioned earlier, there is the case of the informal sector. Many of the elements that plague the informal sector have a connection with the formal sector too. Although we are trying our best to maintain, address the, maintain and address the issues regarding occupational health and safety in the formal sector by following all the guidelines as far as possible, however, 
the situation in the informal sector is totally different. I won't go into all the details. I think it's pretty obvious when we differentiate between the formal and the informal sector. Secondly, there is the cost factor to consider while ensuring safety and security. As much as we fully encourage and endorse the strictest safety standards, the huge associate costs are undoubtedly a discouraging factor. We have been requesting the government for tax rebates and allowing the import of safety items on a zero tax basis. The government has been mulling over this for a long time and I would request our Honourable Minister and our Honourable Secretary that, uh, you know, to look into this matter and perhaps speed the process up. Third, we are yet to approach industrial safety holistically. It is essential knowledge. However, there is no element of occupational safety in the regular curricula of all academic programs, even in vocational training institutions and technical universities like Peart. We should try to incorporate the fundamentals of industrial safety in education. It is a basic need if we are to make progress. Now, I'll just, I'm going to wrap this up. I'll summarize by saying that Bangladesh has an enormous population which properly trained could be a big boon for the nation. Equipping them with the proper skills and exposing them to the global markets will provide a great economic boost. But while this will give a short-term boost, we could achieve sustainability if the workforce has a sense of security. Workers would perform better, their morale would be higher if they could enjoy peace of mind at work. With ISF, we should seek to bring, bring these prospects within our grasp. I'm happy to see all the relevant stakeholders here today. The role of social dialogue during such decisions has always been crucial. Having everyone's support is a must in such pivotal decisions concerning safety standards. It is truly heartwarming to see all the diverse groups with different needs come under one roof and discuss actions for a common cause, raising the industrial safety standards. Whatever our individual goals are, achieving the biggest synergy will require us to work together and be sensitive to each other's needs. That should be our starting point. Now, as a representative of employers, I express our desire to take industrial safety forward. It must be understood, however, that industrial safety-related decisions and actions will take time. They cannot be done overnight. We cannot expect drastic changes just so, as soon as we start. We need to be patient and we need to do it step by step. Let's take it forward step by step and I believe that this Industrial Safety Forum will make all the difference. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kabir, and thank you also for highlighting the various elements of, uh, of safety that uh, helped us to offset the problems with the keynote um, earlier. And also for the commitment and continuing commitment of the Employers' Federation uh, to, the, to building safety culture and systems. Now let's hear from Ms. Shamim Ara, Chairman of the National Coordination Committee for Workers' Education, Workers' Views and Commitments Around uh, Safety. Over to you, Madam. Mananiyo Monti Mohadoy, Upustit Mananiyo Shuchip Mohadoy, Upustit County Director, Ilo County Director, Brother Tomo, Upustit Empress Federation, Shamanito President, Upustit CPD, Brother Mohadjemi, among Atke Upustit. So, the Netri Bindu, Bibino Potishan, Teke Agoto, Netri Bindu, Kormokota Gogun, Bhaibong Bonera, Shabai Kamar, Shangrami Shubeta, Ebong Shuboshokal. Ilo Ebong CPD, Jothu Duge, Industrial Safety Forum, Atke A, Obijatake, NCC W, Pokoteke, Shubeta, or Obinondun Janai. শিল্পের নিরাপত্তা দেশের অর্থনৈতিক উন্নয়ন 
তথা সমৃদ্ধির পূর্ব শর্ত বাংলাদেশের মোট শ্রমশক্তি প্রায় সাত কোটির মধ্যে তৈরি পোশাক শিল্পের নিযুক্ত শ্রমিকদের সংখ্যা চল্লিশ লক্ষ দুই হাজার বারো সালে তাজরিন এবং দুই হাজার তেরো সালে রানা প্লাজা ধসের মতো বৃহৎ শিল্পের দুর্ঘটনার পর তৈরি পোশাক শিল্পে কর্মক্ষেত্রে নিরাপত্তা নিশ্চিত করতে বেশ কিছু উদ্যোগ নেওয়া হয়েছে কিন্তু বাংলাদেশের মোট শ্রমশক্তির প্রায় সাতাশি শতাংশ শ্রমিক অপ্রতিষ্ঠানিক খাতে কাজ করে আর এই অপ্রতিষ্ঠানিক খাতের কর্মক্ষেত্রে গত বছরে মারা যায় এক হাজারও বেশি শ্রমিক তৈরি পোশাক শিল্পের বাইরে ট্রাম্পো নিমতলি হাসিমফুর এর মতো মর্মান্তিক দুর্ঘটনা আমরাও দেখেছি দুর্ঘটনা বা কর্মক্ষেত্রে শ্রমিকদের মৃত্যু শুধু নির্দিষ্ট শ্রমিকের মৃত্যু নয় এটা ওই শ্রমিকের উপর নির্ভরশীল পরিবারের স্বপ্ন পুড়ে যায় প্রতিটি দুর্ঘটনার ক্ষেত্রে আমরা দেখতে পাই শিল্প মালিকের অনেকাংশেই দায়িত্বহীনতা অবহেলা সরকারের তদারকি সংস্থাগুলির দুর্বলতা যথাযথ শ্রমিকের শ্রম আইনের বাস্তবায়ন না থাকা এবং শ্রমিকের ট্রেড ইউনিয়ন ট্রেড ইউনিয়ন বা সংগঠিত হওয়ার সুযোগ না থাকায় কর্মক্ষেত্রে দুর্ঘটনার শ্রমিক হতহতের পরিমাণ অনেক বেড়েছে কর্মক্ষেত্রে নিরাপত্তা নিশ্চিত করা করা গেলে তা শুধুমাত্র শ্রমিকদেরকেই সুরক্ষা দেয় না বরং তা ন্যায়ভিত্তিক শ্রমিক মালিক সম্পর্কে ইতিবাচক প্রভাব ফেলে শিল্পের সুনামও বৃদ্ধি বাড়ে উৎপাদনশীলতা বাড়ায় সর্বোপরি দেশকে এগিয়ে নেয় এই অবস্থা হতে উত্তরণের অনেক উত্তরণে অনেক কাজ করতে হবে বাংলাদেশের ট্রেড ইউনিয়ন দীর্ঘদিন ধরে এই বিষয়ে কাজ করে যাচ্ছে এক্ষেত্রে আইএলওর সহযোগিতা আমরা আরও অনেক বেশি প্রত্যাশা করি সিপিডি দেশের সুপ্রতিষ্ঠিত একটি প্রতিষ্ঠান যা শ্রমিক অধিকার তথা মানবাধিকার রক্ষায় প্রত্যক্ষ ও পরোক্ষভাবে কাজ করছে তাদের সহায়তা পেলে আমরা আমাদের কাজগুলো আরও কার্যকরভাবে এগিয়ে নিতে পারব বলে আমরা মনে করি আমরা নতুন কোনো আর রানা প্লাজা তাজরিন ট্রাম্পো কিংবা সেজান জুস দুর্ঘটনা চাই না শ্রমিকের জীবনের বিনিময়ে ক্ষতিপূরণ দাবি নয় বরং আমরা চাই নিরাপদ ও দুর্ঘটনামুক্ত কর্মপরিবেশ চাই আইনের যথাযথ বাস্তবায়ন চাই সকলে মিলে একটি সমৃদ্ধ বাংলাদেশ গড়ে তুলতে শিল্প সম্পর্কে সম্পর্ক সুরক্ষায় যেন কোনো উদ্যোগকে এন সি সি ডাব্লিউই সবসময় আপনাদের পাশে থাকবে এই প্রত্যাশা রেখে আবারও সবক সকলকে ধন্যবাদ জানিয়ে শেষ করছি মেহনতি মানুষের জয় হোক শ্রমজীবী মানুষের জয় হোক সবাইকে ধন্যবাদ Thank you, and um, truly there cannot be safety at work without the active participation uh, of uh, trade unions and also workers' understanding and, and, uh, and, and collective uh, uh, commitment to safety as well, right? So thank you for those uh, remarks, and um, now we, I would like to ask uh, the um, special guest, um, MD Ehsan E. Alahi, Secretary of the Ministry of Labor and Employment, to provide his uh, remarks um, over to you sir bismillah rahman rahim honorable chief guest mr nurul mujid Mahmoud Humayun, MP, Ministry of Industries. Today's Chair, Mr. Tumu Putini, Country Director, ILO. 
respected guest of honor, Mr. Ardashir Kabir, President Bangladesh Employers Federation, Mrs. Shamim Mara, Chairman NCCWG, and Ms. Dr. Muadjam, distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. It is great indeed a pleasure for me today I am here to say a few words regarding industrial safety. Actually, my ministry is the mandate to establish the labor rights. But how can we establish the labor rights? So it is directly related to maintain the industrial safety whole factories, establishment, and institutions. My ministry is working with the vision of decent working environment and improved quality of the life of the workers. Under my ministry, I have two departments. One of the Department of Labor they are fully responsible for the uh, registration of trade union and conciliation, arbitration of the any dispute of the workers. And then another department is Department of Factories and Establishments. For if Department of Inspection for Factories and Establishments. They are fully responsible for to inspect the factories, to maintain the uh, decent work in the factories whether the employers are maintaining the decent working place and uh, the levers, leave levers, working hour, levers, working condition, and especially in the women levers for carrying their maternity leave or such kinds of uh, to, uh, uh, lactating mother for child care to establish each of the factories. Actually, I would like to see a few words regarding this safety, industrial safety. The industrial safety, actually, the world of the manufacturing, there are three words is correlated. Safety, then one is quality and another is productivity. The quality and the safety and productivity are interfering with each other because safety improves quality and productivity. And quality improves safety and productivity. And also productivity improves safety and quality. So we can see the three of the uh, of these fillers really rely upon each other to improve upon the organization outcomes. When one pillar falls, the others follow. But when one pillar is strong, is strengthening the entire business. Companies need to look at their safety quality and productivity. So they can explore where they may be falling short and where their business may be destabilized. The occupational safety and health, there is a long history. In the British colonial rule, we have a mines act in 1923 mainly all types of industries were regulated under the provisions of Factory Act 1965 and Factory Rules 1970 till 2006. In 2006, the government realized that the Factory Act should be amended according to the modern needs and in called in <coughs> accordance with the international labor standard. So 
2006, the government formulated a new law, Bangladesh Labor Act 2006, that made a revolution in the industrial sector of Bangladesh. And almost every formal sector was covered by that law. Mr. Ardashir Kabir narrated all of the sites of the uh, safety, industrial safety. And also regarding my ministry's work, this Labor Act <coughs> already amended, amended in 2008, 2010, 2013, and 2018, lastly. Now my ministry already formulated two working, two committee for again to amend the law for the betterment of the workers and also the uh, ILO standard. Is there any inconvenience or any inconsistency of, the, of that law? we would like to amend by 2000, 31st December 2022, and we are working on that uh, amendment, to amend the law of uh, 2018. Already uh, we formulated two committees. Each of the committees constituted by the tripartite from same number of the representatives from the levers, same number of the representatives of the workers and of the government. So inshallah we'll be able, able to amend the law 2018, maybe 2022. Uh, it, it will be a good law, it will be a better law that will help us to maintain the decent working place and also the industrial safety of the all uh, factories, established factories, institution, and uh, blah blah. Regarding labor rules, labor rules we have <coughs> formulated labor rules 2015, but this was not updated recently. Already, Adashir Kavit narrated that 139 BD that is rules we have amended and. We have gotten the uh, approval from betting from the Ministry of Law and Justice Affairs. Now, maybe within one or two weeks, we'll go for the SRO. So it will be updated. And recently, the government has formulated the national OSH profile, National Plane of Action on Occupational Safety and Health, 2021 and 2030. 10 years, 10 years. In the consultation with the social partners and stakeholders, we have prepared this, the working conditions, national action plan for safety and health to ensure continual improvement of the working conditions of our working people. The main focus of the action plan is to explain the future direction of the countries occupational safety and health. You will be happy to know that in recent time, Bangladesh has successfully ratified ILO Convention 138 on minimum age convention, that is to minimum age to the entry level of the workers. That we have fixed it 14. I recall the memory uh, and deepest homage to our greatest, all times greatest Bengali, Bangabandhu, and our father of the nation, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, in the year 1972. We became the member of the ILO by his charismatic leadership. And also, you'll be astonished, in the single day, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman ratified 29 ILO convention between the 29, the five convention was, was, was the core convention. Later on, so many governments come but did not ratify any convention. But under the leadership of our present Prime Minister, Honorable Sheikh Hasina, during 
her period, we already ratified another seven convention. And within the seven convention, there are three core convention we have ratified. So we already completed ILO all eight conventions. It is our grand success. <laughs> Bangladesh has successfully completed remediation related activities in most of the RMG enterprises under the National Action Plan. The remaining, we have some activities still we could not achieve, which is one of them, the ILO Convention 190, violence and harassment at the workplace. My ministry is playing a strong leadership role with employers, workers, brand buyers, and other type of trade parties. Bangladesh has adopted several national election plans for different sectors to ensure social, environmental, occupational, and industrial safety overall. Already mentioned our uh, Ardashir Kabir, under the DIFI, we have established a unit, industrial safety unit. Some expertise and some engineers we have already formed. They will look after the industrial safety, not industri industrial safety means other safety, fire safety, yeah. electricity safety, and blah, blah, blah. Though my, 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 my uh, industrial safety unit will be responsible to look into this matter very seriously, all of the factories and establishments. Honorable Prime Minister has instructed that the non rmd sector, some of the factories have to uh, inspected by the inspectors. Maybe they, she would uh, take in the, uh, given the responsibility for BIDA. But under the BIDA, my DIFI, Department of Inspection of Factories and Establishment, has played a key role. All of the committee, 12 committee formed, all of the committee's member secretary, my uh, DIFI's inspectors, and they have already completed. The target is that 45,000 factories will be inspected by these 12 committees. The committee forms various kinds of ministries and other stakeholders. But key play role conducted by my uh, DIFI's inspectors at DIG, IG, uh, additional IG. So this is also a great achievement for us. We already 5,200 factories have been inspected. So what is the reason behind it? Because based on the findings, environment plans, government plans to take the appropriate initiatives, if needed policy formulated to improve the industrial safety for the non-RMG factories, because the RMG sector well established. And uh, all of the sectors, the RMG is something better than other sectors. So we are very much concerned regarding non-RMG and informal sectors. And we are working on their sectors, how to uh, establish the decent working place, how to establish the uh, labor rights. I am very happy to know that the Industrial Safety Forum is going to be held in Bangladesh for the first time. So it is a great indeed a pleasure for me, this first forum, first meeting. Uh, I am attended, I, I have been attended in this meeting and I say a few words in front of all of the distinguished guests and colleagues. The aim of the forum will be to bring parties responsible for industrial safety together to continue the dialogue on ensuring a credible and accountable industrial safety governments, governance structure. The aim of Industrial Safety Forum is to inspire further engagement that will serve as the industries where potential suggestions and recommendations will bring out to ensure a sustainable and safe workplace in the long term. I hope this forum will continue working in improving the knowledge among the stakeholders. Lastly, governments, 
and public body. Actually, government can do alone. Government must be taken some support and must be provide some logistic support to other stakeholders, maybe NGO, maybe civil society. Otherwise, not possible to develop the country. Our Prime Minister's already told us that in different forum, that is called inclusive growth. Means no one left behind. If we want to develop their country, you have to participate in each and all of the sectors, otherwise it could not be possible. So our slogan is that no one left behind and that is called inclusive growth. So I, uh, lastly I am saying that the government and public bodies, employers and workers will work together hand in hand with the same aim to make the workplace more secure and safe for present and future. Last I say one word, there are today our honorable ministers, under his guidance and leadership, I was the chairman of BCIC. I worked under his leadership uh, six months, 23 days. At the time, I was the chairman of the uh, Bangladesh Chemical Industrial Corp Chemical Corporation, and I belong to that grade one, something like that, equivalent to the secretary. I have seen what kinds of leader he is. His direction, his instructions, his advice, the Ministry of Industry is going to uh, and, uh, take all necessary actions to develop the all industrial sectors. Thank you very much for organizing the jointly organized by the ILO and Center for Dialogue, for Policy Dialogue. Uh, thank you again to organize a good workshop for that. I attended one of the workshop online virtual platform yesterday that is the second uh, second uh, secondly i attend this uh, uh, today's workshop uh, by cpd thank you very much for cpd and also ilo thank you for everything joy bangla bangladesh dirgadibok assalamu alaikum Thank you, um, Secretary Lahi, and uh, to highlight the role of all of government and um, all of society in, in driving positive change. Now we have um, the opportunity to truly hear from the Honorable Minister, Mr. Nurul Mahid Mahmoud Humayan, MP, Minister of Industries, uh, his views and uh, encouragement to us in relation to driving safe Bangladesh forward, sir. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I am really delighted to be here as chief guest in this occasion, Industrial Safety Forum in Bangladesh, jointly organized by CPD, ILO, and other concerned. So, distinguished guest, I have already minutely heard, especially Mr. Kabir, he has presented a paper portraying the real picture now existing in Bangladesh from the starting. Thank you, Mr. Kabir, for this portrait. And the other, especially from government, Mr. Esan Elahi, a very successful secretary, has but with vast experience, he is now as a, working as a secretary in labor. He worked in the ministries also very successfully. So he has already elaborated the role of government and the various steps taken by the government now, improving the safety and security of the laborers. Again, I thank CPD because they are playing a very important role in this country for this various sectors development. And we try to follow their suggestions and his recommendations to improve the overall situation in the working place. Especially, 
there are organized working place like governments and others those who are in basic government industrial states and the pz but there is also very scattered way there is industrialization started here especially those are very hazardous without planning now government has planned that no scattered way no industries will be sanctioned anyway they must be in a organized way so that safety and security can be ensured so we try to do it we have got hundreds industrial zone you know it by our honorable prime minister sheikh hasina for industrial growth it's a very growing industrial somebody mentioned it that it was earlier agro based now with agricultural mechanization we are also heading towards industrialization very fast in this situation other sectors also in industrial sector not only the garments we have got opportunities in other sectors in leather we have got tremendous opportunities in the world market we have got a big local market also here for marketing and local producers in various processing food processing these things various crafts so these are in a scattered way they have been developed so it is very important to now regularize these things as ministry of labor is already calculated and we have got strengthened we have updated the back laws now we have in the parliament so many laws are updated to have an organized labor safety and everything you know there was some incident definitely always like nimtoli the chemical flares and others juice garments factories they have they have also given us word us the security measures to take very immediately it's a blessing in these guys otherwise we would have made i think the all participants the parties concerned were now very much serious to have their employees and their factories safeties so yeah so i congratulate and especially from my government side and ministry of industries here fire service managers also here other experts are also here we work together with the employers employees and the government and the other parties those who are we try to under the leadership of our prime minister honorable sheikh hasina we every problem every initiative is very importantly we touch and try to solve all the problems which ever comes as the government is always in action and my ministry is always alert of these things has yet any who are ministry so i can ensure especially i am very fortunate to have this first i thank you ilo that in worldwide they have organized and this is the forum you have organized here in the first i will request you to definitely organize other seminars also so that our entrepreneurs can be enlightened our employers and employees both have an working opportunities and get the knowledge from your other experience they can share their experience and safety measures can be taken and i think our government is working very fast with the ilo convention and everything from bangabandhu's time our father of the nation so i think we are closely working with the ilo and in future we also commit that any recommendation from your side any in safety measures and have our security and safety in the industrial area will be ensured by our government so thank you for inviting me as a chief guest the honored participants are here especially mr mustafiz dr mustafiz and us i hear them very specially when they talk so i have already gained already taken some points from 
your faculty and I try to work in this forum with the, from my ministry and labor ministry. We'll together work together. Thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you, sir, and uh, thank you for the leadership and uh, for your presence here today. We are a little bit late in our proceedings, so I will not go into any uh, closing remarks of this session. I just wish to thank the participants uh, for setting the scene. So thank you so much. We will break for a well-earned coffee and tea break, and I think we will convene 12.15. We give it a 15 minutes, and then we will go to the technical sessions. Thank you all so much. Thank, thank you. you.